You can see the dv on dt there, which was our, where we started with as our definition for acceleration. But notice that if you're the first derivative of velocity, you're also the second derivative of displacement. Start from displacement, go down twice to get to acceleration. And then there's other two results on the right hand side. They're the ones that we just worked out now. Acceleration as a function of velocity is the third one. Acceleration as a function of displacement is the last one. Make sense? Now, I'm getting some nods. However, this won't really make sense until you know how to actually use this thing. So, I'm going to take a moment to let you digest what you're looking at here. I've had plenty of time because I wrote the question, sort of. Um, I'm giving you the acceleration of a particle, but please note, have a look at that very first line, right? X double dot is in terms of what? It's in terms of X's. It's in terms of dis displacement. Not in terms of time, not in terms of velocity, right? So what that tells me is I need to be using this new form for writing acceleration. They're all the same thing, but this form's gonna be more convenient to me. Just like when we were integrating, you're like, ah, oh, this thing looks gross when I'm trying to integrate it like this. Try and integrate some, some stuff like this, right? You're like, that looks terrible. But if I can turn this, oops, sorry, there needs to be a DX. If I can turn this into a pair of fractions, Right? If I can break it apart, if I can decompose it into partial fractions, it's the same thing, but easier to integrate. And that's exactly what we're trying to do here. Right? I want to choose the form of acceleration, and we just looked at four of them, that makes integration easiest and allows me to work with this thing. So you've got an equation for acceleration. You've also been helpfully given some initial conditions. And then we're going to walk through these parts together. So I'm going to start with my acceleration equation, x double dot equals 2x minus 6. And then the first question is find an expression for v squared. So this is, I mean, it's an introductory question, right? This is the question trying to guide you towards use the form for acceleration that has a v squared in it, right? And also we have the fact that this equation is in terms of displacement already. So all I'm going to do is off the basis of this result we've just done, I'm going to do a straight substitution of this for x double dot. This is x double dot, it's just a weird way of writing it, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and write that there, d of half v squared on dx equals the equation they've handed me, okay? So what can I do at this point? Well, I've got derivatives, so I'm going to integrate with respect to x. On the left-hand side, I just get this half v squared. On the right-hand side, it's just a polynomial. We know how to integrate this. What does that 2x become? x squared. What does the minus 6 become? Minus 6x. Is this a definite integral? No boundaries, so therefore I also need constant of integration. Bam. Okay. Now this is looking pretty good, right? Because they asked me for an expression for v squared, and I'm like, almost there. Just two minus snags. That half there, which is not really much of a snag at all. This one's more significant though. I've got this constant integration. Better work out what that is. Now have a look at the question. The question presents us with enough information to be able to work out what that plus c is. Have a look at this equation here. Have a look at what's in terms of. There's a v. There's an x. So what information can I put together that will help me work out what the c will be? Any takers? Hmm. Emmanuel, why don't you give us this one? Um, is there like um, when t equals to zero, v equals to zero, x, x equals to four? Okay, so let's just, um, you actually said some things that are not in the question because you were translating. Let's go with that, right? Emmanuel has helpfully noticed that initially, that word initially, it basically means time zero. Right? Now we can say this, it ends up being not particularly useful to say in this form because I'm never going to use time in this case, but that's also what initially means, so I'll go with it. Right? t equals zero, initially the particle is resting or at rest. So that's a statement about velocity right here. v, as Emmanuel said, is zero. And we also know where it's at zero, it's at x equals four. So these three facts all fit together. Right? Which of them am I going to be using in, say, an equation like this? Have a think. I use this acceleration as a function of displacement, right? Do I need my time equation? Kind of clued this before. I actually don't need it. It's irrelevant, right? I've got nowhere to substitute it into. But over here, I've got a v to substitute into, and I've got an x to substitute into. So let's go ahead and do that. Where did my black marker go? Here it is. Okay. 
when I substitute in x equals 4, v equals 0, right? I can then go straight to the left-hand side. I've got a 0 over there. What do I get on the right? Let's just, uh, you, you've already gone and evaluated. Let's just do the substitution step, shall we? I've got x equals 4, so I'm getting a 16 minus 24 plus my constant. That gives us, as Calvin said, uh, negative 8 right there. So you can add that to both sides. That gives you a constant. Are you happy with that? At this point here, I reckon, come on, we're extension 2 students. I can go to here and just say, I'm going to do this in one fell swoop. I'll substitute in my found value of c, and I will also multiply by 2. I can say v squared equals, here's my 2, and then there is everything with the value of c that I found. Any questions on that? Does that make sense? I found my expression for v squared. And then they ask this next question, which direction does the particle begin to move? In which direction does the particle begin to move? Now this is a question worth asking because if you have a look at this, see this equation here? V squared, right? Since it's V squared, off of this equation as written, you don't actually know whether you're going in the positive direction or the negative direction because velocity gets squared. It's a little bit thinking about like speed, right? Take the absolute value and you know, its magnitude also changes. So I actually don't know about direction from this equation. So I'm gonna give you a clue. To answer this question, part B, right, we are going to use this in a minute, but to answer part B, you have to look elsewhere in the question for other information that's been provided to you. I'm going to get myself a bit of extra space over here on the left-hand side, and I want you to ponder, number one, which way do you think it's going? Number two, how will you write this? How will you communicate, once you've decided which way you think it's going, why you think it is going that way? I'll give you 15 or 30 seconds to have a think. Does anyone have any thoughts to share? Any takers? Morgan, where's your brain go? Um, and as a bonus, if there's anything you'd like me to write, tell me. Not really. Okay. <laughs> I, um, could, I could hope. Initially, because, well, as what we implied earlier, initially t equals zero. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, the particle is resting, meaning velocity is zero. Mm -hmm. when, a vol when a particle is resting, when its uh, velocity is equal to zero, we have to depend in depend on the acceleration of the particle. If the acceleration, in this case, is positive, if we think of acceleration as a force, <laughs> then when the particle is expressed, when, which direction you push the particle, we're going to go that direction. And in this case, as we just substitute x equal to 4 into the acceleration formula, we're going to get 2 <laughs> at, uh, as our answer, which is a positive acceleration. <laughs> Therefore, at the end, the particles will begin to move to the right. Okay. I haven't defined any left right here, but I see what you mean. Okay, let, let me just rehearse that logic for a second, right? The key thing was actually something you said right at the beginning, which was, if you have an object at rest, an object at rest, velocity zero, right? The direction in which the object moves depends only on what force is acting on it, right? If, for example, the only force acting on an object is gravity, then that tells you what direction it's going to go in, right? Because initial velocity is zero, and then a force acts. If, on the other hand, there's some other force, like my arm, right? It's going to go in a different direction. So it's this acceleration equation that tells you everything if you have an initial resting velocity, right? Does that make sense? So therefore, your next step, and actually you could have told me to write this down, Morgan. You said, well, where do we begin? We begin at x equals 4. And we know from the first line of the question what the acceleration will be at that point if we appropriately substitute. So I'll say at x equals 4, x double dot equals 2 times 4 is 8. Take away 6 is what gives us the positive 2 that Morgan already provided in his verbal answer, right? That's in the positive direction. Yes, by default it's often to the right, but you might as well just say it's the positive direction, okay? So therefore from this, right, there's no velocity initially, but you've just got this force acting, this acceleration acting in the positive direction, so that's where you're going to go, right? That's where the whiteboard marker is going to fall because that's the only force acting. Does this make sense? So I can say, therefore, in which direction does the particle begin to move? Particle begins to move. Always make sure, always labor to answer your question in terms of the question's phrasing. Particle begins to move in the absence of an up, down, left, right, uh, in the positive direction. 
If you want, as an added bonus, you can say on the end here, as a is greater than zero, because that's where I got this from, right? Or x double dot will do just fine. Okay, now here comes part C. Remember I said to you before, this equation that we got in part A for v squared doesn't tell you about direction, right? Because you've got v squared there, so you don't know whether v is positive or negative. Part C says, hence, in other words, from part B, uh, find an expression, should be a four there, find an expression for velocity, not for velocity squared, for velocity on its own. Now, the expression we know off the basis of this, it could look a little bit like this, right? To go from v squared to v, what do you do? Take the square root, right? Square root of, and then there will be all this stuff. Uh, what have I got here? Minus 6x plus 8, and so on, right? Except at this point, without any further argument, I have to say this. Because I don't know. I don't know where it's going, right? So how can I progress from knowing from this, where it's sort of indeterminate which direction I'm going in, to work out which one it is, the positive or the negative? I'm going to use part B in some way. Calvin, what are you thinking? I'm going to guess this is... So I can say, as Calvin suggests, well, I already know I'm moving in the positive direction for some amount of time, so can I just ignore this one? That's not a bad way to start, right? But also, it's not sufficient to carry my proof through, right? Because, like, can't particles change direction sometimes? Like, this particle object right here, it starts off moving in the positive direction and then it comes back negative. Things do this all the time, right? It's even a law, like what goes up must come down. What goes in the positive direction must go in the negative direction in a reference form with gravity. So starting in a certain direction, as we got from part B, on its own is not quite enough. Can anyone push a bit further? Because it's a good starting point. It's not enough proof. Any takers? Jiaoyu, what do you think? The acceleration equation is linear. Why is that important, Jiaoyu? That means that it's, like in this case, it's concave up, which means that it doesn't have a turning point for the... So it's a linear function, 2x minus 6, so I can think about, I mean, if I drew it, right? In fact, maybe drawing this for all of you might be a helpful idea. 2x minus 6, what's it going to look like? Something like this. There's negative 6. What's that going to be, by the way? 2x minus 6. Three. Gradient 2, so it's going to be 3. Okay, so there is my function there. Uh, it never turns. Uh, the language of concavity is a bit tricky to use because second derivatives themselves often refer to concavity. This thing itself has no concavity because it's not, it's not curved. Um, but I still take the point, it never turns around, it never changes. Uh, it's not going to come down negative from this point, right? Now, think about this for a brief moment. What are my axes? This is really tricky. I haven't labeled my axes here. And we're so used to just like x's and y's, right? What are the axes here? What was the thing I just graphed? A and N. It was acceleration in terms of acceleration as a function of displacement, right? So therefore, I've got x here and a here, okay? Now, where do we start? Where do we begin? At x equals 4, right? So where's that? Call that 4. There's 4, and I think we already worked out... Two. My scale's terrible, forgive me. Okay, so what happens, right? At this point here, I've got force acting in which direction? Answer, positive. So I start moving off in the positive direction. And then tell me, as I move further in the positive direction, tell me something about the force. Which way is it acting? It's acting more and more in the positive direction, right? So there is nothing, there's nothing that's going to stop me plummeting toward the ground because it's just going to push me and push me further in that direction. Does this make sense? So how do I word that? How do I actually say that in a way that actually proves this, right? Well, it's all about this acceleration equation. So I'm going to say when x is greater than or equal to 4. I'm choosing 4 because I know that's where I begin and then I start moving in the positive direction to the, well, bigger than 4. Make sense? When x is greater than or equal to 4, what can you tell me about 2x? Think back to nature of proof, guys. We can do things with inequalities. I'm just multiplying both sides by 2. This is 8 over here. The acceleration equation, however, is not 2x. It's 2x minus 6. 
So I'm subtracting 6 from both sides, that gives me a 2, right? Well, hold on a second, 2, last I checked, bigger than 0, right? So what this tells us is, within this region here, so long as x is bigger than or equal to 4, what is your acceleration? Answer, it's always going to be greater than or equal to 0. It's never going to turn you back, it's never going to even try to turn you back in the opposite direction, right? So since acceleration is always positive, and you told me in part B that I begin moving in the positive direction, you're just going to go from positive to more positive. So since acceleration is always positive, uh, velocity, in this case, because I start with positive and just get more positive, is also always positive. So therefore, of my two choices up here for V, which one is it? It's the one we had the instincts for before, but now we know the reasons for it, right? So I can say therefore V equals, and then I'm just going to take the positive one. Make sense? We've got one last part to deal with, right? What's it say? Explain why the particle never returns to its initial position. Can we use part C to help us? Why doesn't it ever come back? Say that again, Sasmin. It's accelerating positively, but actually the upshot of that is that since the acceleration is always positive, the velocity is also always positive. So since my velocity, my direction of movement is always this way, I'm never going to come back to where I started. I'm just going to keep going further and further and further away. Right? So therefore, part D, I can say, since velocity is never negative, um, I could say velocity is never negative. So the particle never turns around. And in fact, you will sometimes see a question that will say something like, describe the motion of the particle. And this is also kind of what they're looking for, right? It's like, explain to me in words what that thing is doing. This is just a very specific explanation of where the particle is going. Does that make sense?